the uh, the LGBT pride movement just had its parades this month here in Los Angeles, in New York, and Chicago. And last year, what happened at the Chicago Dyke March? Last year, there were a group of Jewish lesbians who had a rainbow flag with a uh, Star of David superimposed on it. And this apparently offended some people in the parade. Uh, and these women were asked to leave because their uh, flag was an expression of Zionism, even though it was not a, uh, an Israeli flag by any means. Um, as if that, you know, would be a justifiable excuse to kick people out. It shouldn't be because Israel is the only country in the Middle East that uh, really respects gay people. Um, so yeah, they had a, basically a Jewish symbol and they were, they were told to leave. It, it was, was a ra rainbow flag, isn't that about inclusiveness? You would think so, but there's this new ideology called intersectionality, which is uh, becoming quite influential on the progressive left, and it basically privileges certain groups over others. Uh, and Jews are at the very bottom of this. They're considered white, they're considered oppressors and whatnot. So you would think that, yes, you know, Jews should be included in this rainbow flag of diversity, but because the claims or the, uh, the agenda of Muslims takes precedence over Jews, because Muslims are higher on the victim pyramid that the left has constructed, uh, their demands win out. And so when you have a group of Muslims or pro-Palestinian sympathizers, I don't even think it was Muslims who were making this demand. I think it was just white you know, leftists in uh, demanding that these uh, identifiably Jewish women be kicked out of the march because they could appeal to some sort of third worldist cause, in this case, um, the Palestinian cause. Uh, this, you know, because of inter intersectionality, this, this was able to uh, convince the organizers that they should kick these women out. Last year, at the LA Pride Parade, it was subsumed into a resist march. Mm. What's the connection between the uh, LGBT organizers and the leftist movement? Well, the most LGBT activists are on the left, have been on the left since the beginning of the LGBT movement. And on the whole, the Democratic Party has been more favorable to gay rights than the Republican Party. There's really no doubt about that. That's not to say that there aren't gay Republicans, that it's... That it's uh, in any way contradictory or, or um, nonsensical for gay people to be conservative. I don't, I don't buy into that. But you do have to understand that, that background, that it has been Democratic politicians and left-wing politicians more so, certainly than conservatives who have been um, more pro-LGBT. But that's not to say that there haven't been pro-LGBT conservatives. I mean, you know, it was Ronald Reagan quite famously in 1978, you know, opposed publicly, something called the Briggs Initiative, which was a, a, um, a move by a state senator to ban gay people from teaching in public schools in this state. And Ronald Reagan very publicly opposed it. So there have been pro-LGBT politicians uh, on the right. Um, now, you know, in 2018, I don't really see why the gay movement should be aligning itself with the resistance. Um, Donald Trump is, I've been a very strong critic of his, he, uh, he's really not been in, in any appreciable way uh, anti-gay, um, so I don't really have much of a problem with him on that front. Right. Uh, have these uh, uh, LGBT uh, organizers been co-opted, in your view? I don't think they've been co-opted, I think that they... Um, are themselves because of their political dispensation, their political orientation, they are on the left. Uh, and so they want to join the resistance, they want to oppose the president, which is fine, they're entitled to do that, but I, I have a problem with them associating the movement, the LGBT movement, with that. Because in my personal opinion, we've pretty much achieved gay rights in this country. Um, and it's time to move on, there's other battles to fight, and uh, I don't, as a gay person, feel oppressed by, by this country, by Donald Trump. So I don't really see the point. Uh, 
last year they wouldn't let a, uh, a Star of David in the uh, Dyke March. Yeah. Well, what happened this year? Did they also keep uh, Middle Eastern politics out of the uh, equation? My understanding was they allowed Palestinian flags to fly, which uh, in principle I wouldn't be opposed to because there are gay Palestinian people and if they want to express their their pride as Palestinian people, then that's fine. I would just question why would they have kicked out a star? You must have fans here. Apparently. I would just ask why would they have kicked out a Star of David and let in a Palestinian flag? Also, the Palestinian territories are not particularly friendly to LGBT people. Um, certainly not in Gaza, where Hamas rules. But on this notion of intersectionality you mentioned, uh, maybe there weren't even uh, Palestinians carrying the flag. We gotta wait for them. On this notion of intersectionality, perhaps there weren't even Palestinian or Arab women or Muslim women carrying that flag. Do you suppose that it was a statement that the, that the uh, members of the left were showing of uh, some support for the, the Palestinian cause? It's entirely possible, um, in the same way that you see lots of leftists, you know, wearing uh, Che Guevara t-shirts or waving Cuban flags. Even if they've never been to Cuba, they know nothing about the country. They do it anyway, because it's sort of a, it's a cause. Does the Palestinian flag represent more of the uh, Palestinian nationalist cause, or do you see it as a, an anti-Israel move? Oh, it depends on the context. I think it's entirely possible to, uh, to, to have a Palestinian flag and as long as you believe in a two-state solution, then I don't think it's um, shouldn't be offensive to Israelis or Zionists. Uh, but the current uh, administration has uh, has seen through the facade of the uh, of, of the uh, two-state as a solution with the Palestinian Authority. The Trump administration? Would you say? Uh, I'm not aware of that. I'm not aware that there's been. Uh, any public reversal of U.S. support for a two-state solution? I'm not. I'm not aware of that. Apparently, Jerry Kushner is sitting on some uh, peace plan. I'm not. I'm not privy to it. So, uh, leftism within the LGBT community. The only uh, conservatives I know organized are the log cabin Republicans. Do Republicans and conservatives in that community feel? Uh, represented and welcome among the uh, organized uh, LGBT? It's always been difficult. You're in a minority. Uh, there are some people who accuse you of being no different than Jewish Nazis. Um, there are other people who are uh, more open and understanding that just because you're gay doesn't mean you have to be a liberal on tax policy or education policy or foreign policy or really anything else. So I think there's, um, it's becoming more welcoming, I would say. Your article appeared in Tablet? Yeah. Is, would you consider Tablet a left of center publication? Um, at the end of the day, maybe, yes. But it's not, it's a very uh, heterodox publication. They publish all sorts of different views and, and viewpoints. It doesn't think that way. How much concern is there within the Jewish community, even the center Jewish community, about these kinds of rejections of uh, Jewish expression, not not just uh, Zionism. It's increasingly becoming a problem within the LGBT community, is the anti-Semitism and the way in which LGBT politics are being hijacked by the far left uh, in this way. It's a it's a growing problem. But how about among Jewish leftists? Are they concerned? Yes, actually, you do find Jewish leftists who are concerned about this. Um, who are they may be leftists but they're Zionists and they're they're proudly Jewish and they don't like the fact that um, they are being targeted because of that yeah it's, How not just, it's not just Jewish centrists or conservatives who are bothered by this how influential has this leftism come into the mainstream democratic uh, leadership um, I don't think it's um, I mean it's certainly ascendant um, you see someone like Keith Ellison, who's the you know vice chairman of the Democratic Party. We just saw a socialist 
an avowed socialist winning a seat in the Bronx, uh, winning a Democratic nomination for Congress in the Bronx. And I think on the, uh, and there is definitely sort of an, uh, among intellectuals and writers, there's definitely uh, an, an, an ascendant leftism. Yeah. Is it accompanied with an anti-Semitism in your view? Um, in some cases, yes. Um, but not in all. Um, you know, there are, uh, it's definitely hostile to Israel. To the extent that that's anti-Semitic is, a, you know, is a whole other debate. But the Democratic Socialists of America, the DSA, which has been getting a lot of attention over the past couple of years, they have they have endorsed the boycott of Israel, which I consider to be anti-Semitic. How about Linda Sarsour? Would you consider her anti-Semitic? Yes, I do. <laughs> I try not to think about her, but yeah. Uh. But isn't she becoming mainstream among Democrats? I think a lot of Democrats, to be honest, are, are annoyed by her and would rather that she just go away. Um, but yes, I mean, she's one of the leaders of the Women's March, which is a pretty influential, significant movement in this country, so yeah. How do you suppose this will factor into the November elections in terms of uh, the Jews' concern about the Democrat leadership or Democrat candidates? It could be. We'll see what happens with uh, this young woman in the Bronx, but it, it certainly could be.